thanks and praise. So uh, let us rise as we're able and we'll begin worship this day. <coughs> Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy, for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy, for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their word and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we are guided to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in our God, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ, by grace. You have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Winter. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Gracious God, your Son spoke to us in parables about the nature of your reign. Give us ears to hear and hearts to understand that we might be instruments of your peace and justice. Amen. First reading this, mor this morning is uh, from the book of Daniel, chapter 4. When that period was over, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my reason returned to me. I blessed the Most High and praised and honored the one who lives forever. For his sovereignty is an everlasting sovereignty, and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing, and he does what he wills with the host of heaven and the inhabitants of the earth. There is no one who can stay his hand or say to him, what are you doing? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here's the psalm refrain for February 12th. Happy are they who follow the teaching of the Lord. Let's all sing that together. Happy are they who follow the teaching of the Lord. Happy are they whose way is blameless, who follow the teaching of the Lord. Happy are they who observe your decrees and seek you with all their hearts never do any wrong, but always walk in your ways. You laid down your commandments, that we should fully keep them. Happy are they who follow the teaching of the Lord. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes that I should not be put to shame 
when I regard all your commandments. I will thank you with a true heart when I have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Happy are they who follow the teaching of the Lord. According to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up, and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time, I will tell the reapers. Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes like a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Then Jesus told the crowds all these things in parables. Uh, without a parable, he told them nothing. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth and speak in parables. I will proclaim what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin, and all evildoers, until they will, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. 
the gospel of our Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we offer you our thanks and praise for entering into our realm that we might be saved from being separated from your love. In your compassion, you lived beside us that we might see what the kingdom of God looks like. You remind us that it is not our purpose to judge others, that your love and forgiveness is all-encompassing. Help us to see as you do that uh, we recognize that your gift is to all humankind and work to share the message that salvation is for all peoples. We seek your blessing that we might be a blessing for all of creation. In Jesus' name, amen. My dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus. Amen. You know, I was on my way over to uh, Joe's house to have a chat with him uh, one time, and as I was uh, heading down the road, I noticed uh, out in his field this uh, brilliant yellow patch growing, you know, and I thought, well, this will be interesting. So, you know, I pulled into Joe's driveway, and uh, I found him out in his garage where I knew I would, and uh, we began to talk almost immediately about his field. You see, this field um, was uh, his uh, master plan uh, for uh, raising his cattle. Uh, he had spent an enormous amount of money and time planting an alfalfa crop. Well, it turns out that somehow or another in his alfalfa crop, a mustard crop got planted. <laughs> Probably by the wind, who knows. But here he has this very expensive crop of alfalfa uh, that's loaded with all these mustard seeds. Now, you would think that that wouldn't be too big of a deal, but actually uh, uh, the mustard plant gets very woody and it's not cattle and horses and things don't like to eat it. So he thought that perhaps what he should do was send his boys out into that field to pull that mustard. Well, he discovered soon, much like we hear in this parable, that uh, you don't pull weeds out of uh, crops that are growing. And that every time one of the boys pulled up a mustard seed, a half a dozen alfalfa plants would come up with it. So there went his crop. The only thing he could do then was to just sit and wait and let things grow until he could cut them and then cut it all down and that first crop would probably be a waste because uh, he wouldn't be able to separate the mustard from the alfalfa. One of those lessons I guess we learn, uh, there may have been some sort of Herbicide he could have sprayed on it. We don't really know. That would have just been more cost. But it seems like the best care was to let things ride, to let the two plants grow up together. You know, the passage that we heard today about the weeds and the wheat uh, uh, offers uh, uh, that same scenario. Some scholars say that the weed that was growing at that time uh, in that field was one that was a dead ringer for wheat. So it was even more dangerous to go out and try to pull the, those weeds out of the field than that you might be actually pulling up the wheat crop itself. But we read further into this uh, uh, lesson and we actually uh, get a real live explanation about what that parable was supposed to be. Jesus offers us up this allegorical uh, explanation. He tells us that the sower of the good seed is Jesus himself, you know, the son of man. That the field is the world. That the good seed are children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. 
And uh, the enemy who sows them, the devil, the harvesters in this case are the angels. The explanation continues about uh, how the Son of Man uh, removing uh, from his kingdom all causes of sin and evildoers then throws them into the fire. The righteous will shine. You see, it's pretty apparent here that it's going to be Jesus that does the judging if there's going to be any judging going on. It's not going to be us. But, um, you know, over the years, this particular passage, uh, there have been some who have um, thought that they should rename it and reclassify the way things are. You know, that um, the, instead of it being the world, they, they figure that the world then really represents uh, all those who believe. That is, us Christian folks, you know. And the uh, non-believers, specifically at that time, the Jews, uh, would be uh, the evil ones, so to speak, you know. It, it just uh, doesn't see that in this text that it's the way it was said to be. It's plain, it's simple. There's no alluding to who might this be and who might that be. It's simply the world. And that uh, good and evil exist together in this world regardless of what we do. It's just the way things are, you know. It, it happened, it probably happened at the fall um, that it's evil entered into our lives. So now we wait. We put up with that as best we can. And we try to then continue to live that we might be able to uh, exist side by side with the evil of this world. But you know, our own human nature uh, likes to focus just a little bit more on uh, who might be the weeds among us. You know, we, we like to draw right to that end of the, the story where we can say, oh yeah, those are the weeds there. And that we then take an attempt to remove them uh, from our own lives. We try to sort those weeds out however we can. No, in and of itself, that's not such a bad thing. That is, after all, what we're called to do. We're called to proclaim Christ crucified, risen from the dead, that all might live. The thing is, in that, is that it's so that all might live. Everyone is given the same opportunity to experience what God has in store for us. You know, perhaps what the focus here should be on how vast God's kingdom really is. Just how large is it? I mean, even though we are tempted to remove that evil around us, we are asked to grow alongside of it, as I said, that our own roots, you know, our connection to God, our connection to Jesus, the Holy Spirit, that we allow that to continue to grow undisturbed by the evil that surrounds us. Perhaps we need this reminder that all of us are born into sin. And do our lives then always reflect that we are wheat? Or are there times then when we look more like the weeds? So then, do we accept those evil ways? I think not. I mean, as we continue to do our work here to help restore the goodness and mercy, the kindness and the justice that was meant for all peoples in this world, 
The kingdom is indeed much larger and more complicated than we can ever imagine. But our purpose is to live into it, not to control it. The focus then, Christ Jesus our Lord, who in dying on the cross gives us a way of forgiveness. And in that forgiveness we also find a new life, a life filled with God's love, a life that is indeed eternal and everlasting. Our lives then are freed, that we might have a life full of the goodness and mercy God has for all of creation. So we let those weeds grow. We leave the final days up to Christ Jesus, our Lord. But we rest secure in the notion that we, who trust in his promises, will live forever. Amen.
with the whole church. Let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that our Savior, Jesus Christ, hears us when we pray, we lift up the church, our bishops, Elizabeth and Catherine, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, your son Jesus spoke of your reign in terms of the littlest things, yeast, mustard seeds, that utterly transform all they touch. Help us to sow your love and justice in the world that all might see you in all things, merciful God. You hear our prayer. You have called us to be stewards of your creation. Teach us to protect all green and growing things from mustard seeds to giant sequoias and the ecosystems that sustain them and us. Merciful God. You hear our prayer. Give leaders throughout the world the humility not to assume that their people are the wheat and other peoples are the weeds. Commit them to the nurture of all people without judgment. Merciful God. You hear our prayer. Dear Jesus, we know you are among us now and always. As you heal the sick and infirm during your ministry on earth, we ask that you would bring healing and wholeness to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Pray especially for those in our bulletin, including members and friends and relatives of our congregation, for our military. And we pray also for those who are suffering from nat natural disasters, the earthquake in Syria and in Turkey, and those who suffer persecution because of their race, their beliefs, their religion in all areas of the world, including our country. We pray, merciful God, you hear our prayer. Keep us mindful of the victims of state violence, oppression, and justice in our nation and the world. Kindle in us a passion to work for your justice for all people. Merciful God. You hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving all the saints who planted their faith in our hearts like the tiniest of seeds and watch it grow into strong, fruit-bearing trees, merciful God. You hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and hold all for whom we pray in your loving arms. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace.
break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings and thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore to Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. to us, Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it. Gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day in our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we disarm the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Let 
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Hey! 
Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love, kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod Bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Amen. I think everything is as printed uh, in the bulletin here. Uh, there is one thing that uh, I'd like to mention. You can go to the Synod website 
And there's this thing called kaleidoscope that's going to happen during uh, the Lenten season. It's a online kind of thing. You know, you can um, Zoom it. I think they're going to have Zoom meetings with it. But they're going to have it in three or four different sections about uh, justice and peace in this world. Uh, there's a, a section that'll be about uh, racism. There's a section about dealing with uh, our Native American uh, friends. And, um, uh oh, I forgot the last one. Oh, well, I have. Anyway, um, if you wish, go ahead and sign up and join that. Uh, it uh, should be a, a pretty good discussion down the road. So are there any other announcements this day? Just want to make a reminder that our annual meeting is uh, next uh, Sunday at 9 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall. The reports are on the back there for you to pick up. The only one that's missing is the profit and loss report, but it will be presented next uh, Sunday. And uh, please bring your reports and take them home this week. Remember to bring them back next week because we're going really to cut back on the number of yeah, because there's, there's not a lot of trees left around here. <laughs> I watch lots of log trucks go by every day. And then the other thing is uh, Michael's birthday on yeah. Tuesday. Oh, oh man. man. Tuesday. <laughs> Nothing else, then go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.